HPV is the human papilloma virus. Like all viruses, this is a viral infection. It is of significance is because if it is left alone, it can cause cancers. So we understand that viral infections usually clear by themselves. In a similar manner, the HPV also does clear. But there is a small percentage, about 2% of patients who do not clear the virus. And these are the ones in whom it could lead to very dangerous consequences. HPV is basically a sexually transmitted disease, basically indicating that it is spread by, you know, a sexual contact. So this is the only way and the route through which this virus is transmitted. And uh, it can happen, the infection can happen in men as well as in women, meaning in boys as well as in girls. So this is absolutely the only route. There is no chance of transmission from uh, a person to person through any other way. That is, as we talk about other viruses, this is not transmitted through the air or through food or in any other method of transmission. In whom the virus lingers on, and can lead to long-term consequences. There are changes in the tissues which happen because of the persistence of this virus in the body. And that's what results in cancers of different parts of the organs. Basically, the cancers are related to cancer of the cervix, the uterus, the vulva. In men, it can be cancer of the penis, it can be cancer of the throat, the tongue, etc. Now, uh, there is a vaccine available. As we are all aware, childhood vaccinations are for protection against a lot of infections. In a similar manner, we do have a vaccine to protect against this HPV virus. Now, as in other uh, vaccines that we administer before the person, the child develops infection, in a similar manner, we do recommend that this HPV vaccine is administered before the onset of any infection. So we recommend that this vaccine is administered from the age of nine years onwards. At present, in India, this vaccine is licensed for use in girl children only, um, above the age of nine years. And what we do is we recommend that starting from nine years until 15 years, we manage to give protection to the child, to the girl child, by just administering two doses of the vaccine. But once they are over 15 years, this vaccine is licensed for use until the age of 45 years. Once over the age of 15 years, then the need is for three doses of the vaccine to be administered. The schedule is such, if it is two doses, you give the first dose and wait for six months for the second dose. And if it is a third, if it's a three dose schedule, that is if the child is over 15 years, then you need to do a three dose schedule. You give the first dose, the second dose after two months and the third dose six months later. Administering the vaccine is definitely not a contraindication because there are four types of the virus commonly which cause infections and there are many more which also can cause infection. And hence, by administering the vaccine, even a person who has infection with a particular type of the virus is getting the protection against the other types of the virus. So it's definitely not a contraindication. There are no guidelines to say that all women above the age of 25 should be given the vaccine. It's on a case by case basis. There are times wherein the mother comes with the child into the clinic and requests that she also wants to take the vaccine. In such circumstances, definitely the vaccine can be administered. There is absolutely no contraindication. A lot of studies have been done across the globe. There's a lot of data available to show that the two dose or the three doses are sufficient to give a lifelong protection.